Options are quickly becoming a more and more popular way for everyday investors to hedge their risk, generate income, or speculate on direction. In today's video, we're going to be specifically diving into the Interactive Brokers platform and going through the process of trading options every step of the way. We'll first begin by creating a customized layout specifically for trading options within the platform. In order for us to do this, we're going to go ahead and start by coming down here to the Layouts tab in the lower left-hand corner and specifically selecting the plus icon. I'm then going to go ahead and create a brand new customized layout and I'm going to go ahead and give it the name Options 2 and go ahead and hit Create. Once we have our new layout selected, I'm going to begin by coming up here to the new window screen and the very first tool I'm going to add is actually going to be an option chain. Now, this will be the tool that you guys actually use to place all of your option trades and actually get a better idea of what's going on in the market. Now that I've got it sized the way I like it, next up we'll go ahead and add an order status page so I can actually keep track of all of my open and working orders. And that'll be under order management and then specifically orders. For me personally, I actually prefer to have it right below the option chain itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and move it in here and size it the way I like it. I'm next gonna go ahead and add a nice little chart so we can actually keep track of the stock that I'm currently trading. So I'm gonna go ahead and add charts right here. I'm gonna go ahead and move it just the right of the actual option chain and fit it in again just the way I like it. And then finally, I'm gonna go ahead and add a portfolio tab so I can actually keep track of all of my positions in the account and how I'm currently doing. And we'll go ahead and put that in the lower right hand corner of our screen. Now that we actually have the layout customized the way we like it, we've got the tool set up the way we like it, we'll go ahead and lock this in. Now, for the most part, when we're actually trading options, we're gonna be spending most of our time on the option chain itself. So let me first begin by describing what it is we're actually looking at here. Beginning by looking in the upper left-hand corner of the option chain, we can actually see what stock we're currently trading. In this case, Apple or AAPL. Just to the right of that, on the exact same line, we can actually see how that stock traded today. In the case of Apple, we can see it last traded for 139.74 and it was down 62 cents today. Just below that, we can actually see a few tabs listed out there, which are gonna act as our filters. This will actually adjust what information gets displayed down below in the option chain. Beginning with the very first filter tab up there, mark list view. This simply means how we want the options expirations displayed down below. So in the case of list view, it means all of the options expirations are listed down below in the description. If we were to go ahead and click on that and instead flip it to tabbed view, we would then see all of the options expirations as tabs at the top of our chain. Now, for me personally, I'm used to the list view, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip it back to that. Next up, the next filter we'll discuss is the number of strikes currently visible. In this case, we currently have 20 strikes showing, but if we wanted to adjust that, we could always go ahead and click on it and either type in how many we wanted to see in this kind of custom filler box, or we could select one of the default numbers down below. So in my case, I'll go ahead and flip it to 10. Now, finally, the very last tab we'll discuss up there currently says max, and that's how far out in time we're going with the current expirations. At the moment, since we currently have max selected, it means we're showing every single expiration available for Apple in this case. Looking in the option chain right here, we can see that means it goes all the way out to June 21st of 2024. However, if you guys wanted to limit that in some way, maybe you didn't want to show every single expiration available, we could come up here to max and we could actually flip it to, let's say three months. You can then quickly see that our expiration list has been quite a bit refined. Instead of going all the way out to 2024, we're only going out to August 19th of 2022. But again, those were all of the filter options that we could adjust, but there's nothing too crazy about it. Now, looking down below in the actual option chain itself, you'll first notice that it lists out the date of expiration, followed by the number of days until expiration in parentheses right next to it. You'll also notice that by looking on the far right-hand side, we can also see the current implied volatility for that expiration. I'll also mention that the weekly options are in yellow, whereas the standard monthly contracts are in white. From there, if we actually select one of these options expirations, we can actually see all of the strikes listed out down below in the center column. Looking here, we can see the strikes that are currently showing are from 135 all the way down to 144. Looking to the left of that strikes column, we can see all of the available call options. Looking to the right, we can see all of the available put options. You may also notice that all of the in the money options have a purplish shaded background, whereas all of the out of the money options have a tannish gold background. Looking at the very top of the option chain, you'll also notice the column headers or the informational columns where we have all of our information that we like to see displayed. 
If you guys ever need to change that information or move it around a little bit, you would simply come up here to the settings menu in the upper right hand corner and then click on settings. Once the little pop-up window comes up, you'll simply come over here to the layout tab and then we can see all of the current columns we have visible on the left hand side and then on the right we can see all of the columns we could add. Now in my case, I'm actually perfectly happy with the columns I currently have. That'll include the description, the open interest, volume, bid and ask, and then delta and theta. So since I'm happy with that, I'm simply gonna come down here and select OK. And now we can take a closer look at the option chain itself. So now that we actually have an idea of what it is we're actually looking at here, let me next go over how we would actually buy and sell options within this platform. And I will start by mentioning the process is pretty much identical to every other platform out there. Whenever we want to buy an option, we're gonna click on the asking price. Whenever we want to sell an option, we're gonna click on the bid price. Now, before we actually create any trades in here, the very first thing I'm gonna do is come down here to the strategy builder and go ahead and turn that on. This will just make actually building out the trades far easier because whenever I click on the bid or asking price of an option, the actual order ticket will pop up down here below rather than creating a separate pop-up window. Jumping right into our very first example, let's actually say we were bullish on Apple in this case, so we thought Apple was going up. Now, of course, there are several different trades that we could do to actually take advantage of this upward move that we expect, but the very first example is just outright buying a call option. So looking up here in this list, let's say I wanted to be slightly in the money, and let's say I typically like to look for a 70-ish delta. So looking here, it looks like the 170, excuse me, 137 calls would match that criteria currently having a delta of 73. If I were then to look over to the left-hand side and see what the current bid and asking price is, I can see it's currently trading for 415 by 450. Now in my case, since I'm actually bullish on Apple, which means I want to buy this call option, I'm gonna start by actually clicking on the current asking price, $4.50. Now as soon as I did that, you guys probably noticed that that order ticket immediately got built out down here below. So right here, it begins by saying I want to buy one of the May 27th, 137 calls. And if I look down a little bit further, I can see again that current bid and asking price. Looking here, this is actually where we're gonna start building out the order ticket and basically telling interactive brokers what it is we wanna do. So beginning left to right, we can see here the very first box I'm gonna select is the order type. Now in this case, I currently have a limit order selected, which means we are specifying a price. In my case, for this very first example, that is exactly what I wanted to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it set as a limit order. I'm then gonna go ahead and move over to the quantity box and actually specify how many contracts I wanted to buy. Now in my case, let's say I actually wanted to buy two contracts. So I'm gonna go ahead and select two here. I'm then gonna come over here to the limit price where I can actually set how much I wanna pay for this contract. Now, in my case, let's say I wanted to try and get roughly the midpoint between the bid and the ask. That would be roughly, let's say, $4.35. And I'm going to go ahead and lock it in by hitting enter here. Now, finally, the very last thing I may need to change is the actual time in force. So how long I want this order good for. In my case, it's currently a day order. But if I were to click on that, I could flip it over to good until canceled or GTC. Now, GTC simply means if this order does not fill today, try again tomorrow. If it doesn't happen tomorrow, I'll try again the next day and the next day and so on until it either fills or until I come in here and cancel it. Now, before we actually hit submit, I will also mention you guys have the ability to create more of an advanced order. Now, this would be an order that basically triggers another order to go out there. In my case, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for what we're doing today. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit the X button here. And now that I'm happy with this, the order ticket looks correct. I'm simply going to come over here and hit submit. You'll very quickly notice that as soon as I did that, a little order confirmation window came up and all it's doing is confirming everything I just did on the previous screen. Looking up here, it says I wanna buy two of the Apple 137 calls for a limit price of $4.35. If we were to look down a little bit further, we can also see the estimated total cost of this trade would be roughly $870. So in my case, everything checks out, it looks good. So what I'm gonna do is come down here and hit transmit. I'll go ahead and change this to always use for that price algo. And once I do that, I can actually see my open and working order down here below in the order status window. Right up there at the top, we can actually see that open order to buy the Apple 137 calls, and it's an open order to buy it at 435. There are actually a few different ways for me to tell that it is a working order, but probably the easiest way is by looking over here to the quantity box, and it currently says I have filled zero out of two contracts, so I haven't bought any of them. Now, later down the line, let's say you guys decide to either outright cancel this working order or you want to adjust it in some way. 
In order for us to adjust it or actually to cancel it, all we have to do is actually right click on the order ticket itself. From there, looking at the very top of this pop-up window, we could just outright cancel the order. Like let's say we changed our mind and we no longer wanna buy these contracts, we would just hit that. However, looking down below, we also have the ability to modify the order ticket. So we can come over here to order ticket. Looking here at this pop-up window, we can then adjust how many contracts we're buying or the price that we're currently paying for it. So let's say in my case, I wasn't getting filled because I was asking for a better price than it was currently going for. So I was willing to bump up the price a little bit. I could always highlight this and let's say I wanted to bump it up to, let's just say 450. And once I'm happy with that, we'll just come down here and hit transmit. So again, looking down here in the order status screen, we can see that my working order has been adjusted from 435 up to 450. I think it's also important to mention that you guys also have the ability to close out an open position by coming over here to your portfolio tab. Now in my case, I don't actually have just a outright single leg option, but I do have a bull call thread down here, if you can see it. Right there, it says I've got an Alibaba, May 27th, 85 by 90 bull call spread. Now I know this might be a little bit confusing because this is a spread, but the premise is exactly the same. So let's say later down the line, we actually decided to close out this vertical or close out an option or stock. All we would have to do is actually right click on the position we wanna close, then come over here to trade, and select that we want to close the entire position. Now in my case, we can actually see a little warning screen came up because we actually already have a working order to close out this spread. So if I wanted to use a different example, let's say my Netflix stock position, if I wanted to close that, I would simply right click on it. I would then come over here to the trade tab and select that I wanted to close out of 100% of the position. Now I know this example is a stock position, but if you were to do this on an option, it would be exactly the same. It would create a little pop-up window where we would then specify how many contracts we wanted to sell, what price we wanted to sell it for, and how long we wanted that order good for. So the premise is exactly the same. You would just fill out the order ticket and then hit submit over here in the lower right hand corner. Now moving on from that for a second, let's actually next say we wanted to put on a bearish position. So to do this, let's actually flip to a different stock ticker. So what I'm gonna do is come up here to Netflix and let's say I was bearish on Facebook, let's say. Looking here at this Facebook chart, let's say I thought Facebook was gonna have a nice downward move and I actually wanted to take advantage of that by buying a put option. Looking down below at the available strikes, let's again say I wanted to buy slightly in the money and I was looking for roughly a 70 delta option. It looks like right here, the 187 and a half put actually matches my criteria. Looking here, it says it's got a delta of 73 cents. And then looking just to the left of that, I can see it's currently going for $5.05 .05 by $5.40. Now remember, I mentioned before that whenever you guys want to buy an option, we're gonna click on the asking price. That goes for both calls and put options. So in my case, since I am bearish on Facebook and I think it's gonna go down, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the current asking price here, $5.40. Just like before, as soon as I clicked on that, you can see it gets added to our strategy builder section down below. So looking right here, it says I wanna buy one of the May 27th, 187 and a half puts, Looking right below that, we can again see the current bid and asking price, 505 by 540. I'm then gonna fill out the order ticket from left to right, just like normal. So right here where it says limit, I could always change this to a different order type or go ahead and leave it as limit. I can then come over here to the quantity box and specify how many of these contracts I actually wanted to buy. So in this case, just one. Just to the right of that, I can then specify what price I actually wanted to buy these contracts for. Now remember, since I'm buying these contracts, the best available price currently is going to be the asking price. That means if I wanted to fill on these contracts right now or immediately, I would have to put it in at the current asking price. Now most people, instead of putting it in at the current asking price, are willing to try and get a better price known as the midpoint. Now the midpoint is going to be the price between the bid and the ask. Now, of course, you guys do not have to put it in at the current asking price. You guys could ask whatever you wanted for it, but the ask is gonna be the best price right now. Now, in my case, I don't wanna put it in at the current asking price. I'm only willing to buy these contracts or this contract if let's say it drops down to $4.50. Now, remember, with the current price at 505 by 540, this order is definitely not gonna fill right away. We would need Facebook to actually move up a little bit for this put to decrease in value. But let's say for this example, I only wanna buy this option if it drops down to 450, I'm gonna go ahead and lock that in. I'm then gonna come over here to the time and force and let's say I'm willing to uh, put this out tomorrow if it doesn't fill today. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it to good until canceled. Once I'm happy with that, everything looks right, I would simply come over here to the submit order tab 
And then I would just confirm everything on this order confirmation window. So right here, starting from top to bottom, it says I wanna buy one of the Facebook 187 and a half puts for a limit price of 450. Looking down below, we can see the math is very simple. Since this is only one contract, it's gonna cost me a total of $450. Now, for those of you not super familiar with options, remember that is because an option contract represents 100 shares of the underlying stock. So that means the price we actually see in the option chain, if it says four bucks, that is really $400 per contract. If we were to see 50 cents there, that is truly $50 per contract. So we always have to multiply that number times 100. Now, in my case, everything looks right. And again, I am bearish on Facebook. I think it's gonna go down. I'm just gonna come down here and hit transmit. As soon as I do that, I can then see that open and working order down here below to buy those put options for $4.50. Again, later down the line, if I decide to either change my mind or just outright cancel the order, I could simply right click on it and hit cancel. You can then see here what a canceled order looks like. It's got a little red circle on the left hand side and it's kind of grayed out. But I think you guys get the general idea of how to actually buy options in this platform and actually creating spreads is pretty much the same process. Now I actually made a completely separate video for spreads, so I'm not gonna dive too deep into this, but creating a spread in here is basically just selecting the multiple legs that you wanna trade. So let's say for example, you wanted to put on a long vertical call spread. So if we wanted to do that, and let's say we were looking at buying the 180 call, which we can see here is currently going for 550 by 570, if we wanted to buy that option, we would simply click on the current asking price, $5.70. Now for this example, let's say I wasn't that bullish on Facebook. I didn't actually wanna risk $570 on this trade. So in order for me to reduce that overall risk on this trade and actually reduce how much capital I have to put up, what I'm gonna do is actually sell a further out of the money call along with this. So in my case, I'm actually gonna be looking at five points further out of the money. In this case, that would be the 185 call, and since I want to sell this one, I'm gonna click on the current bid price, $2.55. As soon as I do that, you can now see there are two legs down below in the strategy builder. Looking here, it says I wanna buy one of the 180 calls while simultaneously selling one of the 185 calls. You would then move on to the order ticket, which is again, simultaneously buying and selling these contracts all at the exact same time but this would be the process of any other spread inside of this platform. If I were to delete these legs out of here, and let's instead say I wanted to do an iron condor, let's look up here, and I'm just gonna go through this quickly because like I said before, I've done this already in a separate video. So looking right here, I know I went through it very quickly, but down here below, we can see I've got four separate transactions happening. Right here, it says I'm gonna sell one of the 180 puts, buy one of the 175 puts, sell one of the 190 calls, and buy one of the 195 calls. It even identifies the type of spread we're doing right down here below, so it says we're putting on an iron condor. But again, I think you guys get the general gist or idea of how to trade options now within Interactive Brokers. Like I said, I did make a much more in-depth video on creating spreads in here, so please check that out if you guys would like to learn more. If you guys do have any additional questions for me or recommendations for other tutorials you guys would like me to discuss, please leave them down below. But that wraps up today's video on options. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your week and I'll catch you on the next one.